So this brings us to a model, module 2b, uh, interlingual re-speaking. This module 2b was created by the team of University of Antwerp, uh, which consists uh, more specifically here um, by myself and Anthony van Huy. And um, the module has been evaluated and also fine-tuned by Haley Dawson and Alice Pagano. A huge thanks to all those that were involved from the large ILSA team, and more specifically to Haley, Anthony and Alice for combining the different skills and know-how about this topic and translating it into this online course. Well, first of all, we need to acknowledge the importance of subtitling and simultaneous interpreting and the shift from intra to interlingual re-speaking by comparing them. Interlingual re-speaking and pre-recorded subtitling share the same output because audio from langu one language is taken and transformed into written text in a different language. The similarity is the end product, which is text on screen. For interlingual re-speaking and simultaneous interpreting, the similarity lies in the process of listening in one language and speaking in another at the same time. However, interlingual re-speaking requires the use of speech recognition software to turn the re-speaker speech into text. This means that re-speakers need to add punctuation, make pauses to release text, and correct errors. Intra and interlingual re-speaking share the same process, but extra complexity lies in the language transfer process for interlingual re-speaking. This may give some more context as to why, in this course, students progress from pre-recorded subtitling to simultaneous interpreting to intra and interlingual re-speaking. Interlingual re-speaking the training is a recent addition into the curriculum of some interpreti interpreting and audiovisual translation programs, mainly at postgraduate level. Research in interlingual re-speaking took off a few years, a few years ago. To develop module 2b, we have focused on understanding the principles and basic skills required from the other modules in the ILSA course. We have also brought together professional practice and recent research in interlingual speaking training to transform existing knowledge into modules 2b and 3a for this online course. So this is a quick reminder of the course structure and to see where interlingual speaking sits. And let's have a look at the structure of this module. Module 2b consists of four units. In the introduction, we focus on explaining and understanding the concept of creating interlingual live subtitles via re-speaking. Then the module is framed around the three stages of the interlingual re-speaking process. The pre-process, the peri-process, the post-process. And in each of these units, we focus on the challenges of interlingual re-speaking during each process. Extra resources include some interesting interviews, with professional interlingual speakers in different countries who give their insights into the profession. Also, there are some recommended readings that are based on recent research in interlingual speaking, some of which include ILSA intellectual outputs. Let's take a closer look at the content of this online course. Haley, I pass on the word to you. Thank you, Haley. I'm just um, sharing my video. Okay, so I'll go through the four units of Module 2B now. Uh, module 2B was developed by understanding and evaluating how to merge practice and the existing theoretical framework of interlingual speaking together. So the first unit draws on the challenges that interlingual speaking poses and the skills needed to deal with such challenges. As we just mentioned, the uh, task-specific skills for interlingual speaking come from subtitling, interpreting, and intralingual speaking. So, Unit One begins with two video lectures that explain concepts. Then, the stages of the re-speaking process are briefly explored, which I'll go over in a moment. And as Veerly mentioned earlier, when students move from intra to interlingual speaking, there is a shift in language. 
For this reason, we revisit punctuation within the context of interlingual re-speaking, and we also revisit dictation, this time interlingual dictation, where students can read a written text in one language in their head, but dictate it in another language to speech recognition software. Module 2B is then framed around the three stages of the interlingual re-speaking process, so the pre-process, the peri-process and the post-process that Franz went through in detail earlier. And throughout Module 2B there are video lectures on these uh, stages made by Alice Parano, who we gave uh, thanks to earlier. So we're going to focus on the pre-process for a moment. The pre-process skills refer to those that are needed before the main interlingual re-speaking task takes place. So preparation is uh, noted as the main requirement of the pre-process phase, and pre-task activities must be carried out for uh, optimal re-speaking performance, including familiarization with speech recognition software, researching the topic that will be re-spoken, and searching for terminology. And for Unit 2, the pre-process is introduced, and it's followed by information on preparing vocabulary in multiple languages and customising the speech recognition software. For example, training words and creating macros. Then some interlingual re-speaking exercises allow trainees to put what they've just learned about the pre-process into practice. So Unit 3 is dedicated to the peri-process of interlingual re-speaking. Peri-process skills are those that are required to carry out a live translation. As we know, the actual task of re-speaking entails producing a spoken output, a written output, monitoring and correction. Therefore, skills such as listening comprehension, strategic reformulation, dictation and monitoring, and coordination and control are all needed in the PERI process. So in Unit 3, the PERI process is introduced, followed by information on workflow, working with delay, and then making live error corrections. And the practical interlingual re-speaking exercises focus on producing a live presentation and correcting it. And finally, Unit 4 concentrates on the post-process. So the post-process is understood as the stage that deals with carrying out quality assessment of live subtitles and having team debriefs, for example. The post-process is a chance to reflect upon performance with the view towards future improvement. As in the previous two units, the post-process is introduced. Ideas are given on how a team debriefing could be carried out. And then students are given information on the NTR model. There's a reading, a video lecture, and some exercises on applying the model to an already re-spoken text. In the exercises, students are encouraged to carry out self-evaluation of their practical exercises. And this is helpful for students to complete as they're carrying out exercises without the presence of a trainer. So self-evaluation will help them to identify their strengths and their weaknesses as interlingual re-speakers. So you can see throughout Module 2B, students are taken from preparation to practice to assessment. Aside from the exercises, students have been given the opportunity as well to understand the complexity of interlingual re-speaking and how to train each stage step by step. So I'll pass you back to Billy now, who will go over the learning plans. Thank you, Hayley. So the learning outcomes, let's have a look at some of them. The trainee will be able to refine the language model by customizing the vocabulary, in particular by adding words from documents and adapting to writing style in the interlingual life context. Train the speech recognition for specific terms that might be needed in the interlingual context, such as the use of short forms and docs or micros and define the principles of interlingual life speaking with delay and without delay. But also listen to the audio in language A and reformulate it in language B while using speech recognition and making their own corrections, using use speech tools for punctuation while speaking from language A into language B, and to perform interlingual life speaking without delay. 
And so this is just to give you some examples of the learning objectives because there are many, many more. If you would like to explore them more, of course, we invite you to the online module. If there's any questions, I think this is the moment, but if you have some specific questions for us um, on preparing the ILSA course, you have also our details over here. All right, thank you, Verle and Hailey. And I see that there are already a few questions in the chat box. Let us go to the chat. Can you see the chat? Um, from which question? Um, well, there is a first one regarding European Portuguese, um, saying if I'm not mistaken, speech recognition softwares do not work properly with European Portuguese. How can we overcome this? Well, this is... So this is indeed a, a question very specifically to speech recognition software and uh, the technology is one of, of the things that we deal also in, in general with the course that we need to understand that it's not perfect yet and that we need to train our students to, to deal with what we have. So um, it, it might be worth trying to test different kind of speech recognition softwares in order to get the best result. But it is true that in our course we also developed all the problem areas that you might encounter as a, as a live re-speaker, be it in intra or an inter, um, so that you can find uh, different ways of, of um, combining all the techniques, being sp speaking, typing, um, making the corrections, uh, or creating ways around with the talks or macros, for example. And I see there are already a few answers from uh, Lukas and Pablo in the chat. Maybe Pablo would like to answer that, happy to answer that if needed, <laughs> he wrote, yeah. so Pablo? Yeah, um, this is the question about, sorry, I lost the connection for a second, that was the question about Portuguese? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, an answer to that, um, uh, we've been testing some different types of software in Portuguese and I don't think we've been so lucky or happy so far, but Jacobo Corrais from UVigo, who's been trained as part of the UVigo, the online UVigo course. I know he's been testing because I passed on some details from different projects that actually have developed speech recognition software um, only for re-speaking and he's been testing some of those. I don't think he's been fully satisfied with the results so far. Um, so it's, I think, it looks like work in progress yet. Um, which, which is um, interesting and very disappointing given the um, well, the, 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 the number of users that that could actually give access to. Okay. Um, there was another question. Can you in detail what is included in team debriefing? It was a question before the question or just after the question about Portuguese. Yeah, team debriefing uh, is a is a reading in module in the last unit of module two B uh, in the post process section. Uh, and it really details how uh, Vili wrote it actually, this, this specific reading from her experience, her professional experience. Um, and it sort of really details how a team can come together and what questions they might want to ask each other in view of future improvement, what conversations those questions can then uh, lead on to, such as, for example, um, I don't know if a re-speaker realizes that they made a there was a mistake, but they didn't correct it. Maybe they can discuss uh, whether it would have created too much delay or not and how they can avoid things like that in the future and perhaps improve the workflow. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to, to add on that, really. No, exactly, yes. Every time you work together as a team is a learning opportunity. It's important to do a sort of short evaluation or to create a moment so to see if things can be approved and if not, sometimes to just to cheer together and to give each other an applause because um, you don't often see your audience when you're working. And so um, basically you have your team uh, on which you can rely for positive and sometimes negative feedback uh, in order to improve. Okay, and there was a question, do you have a checklist for this debriefing, by the way? 
some kind of checklist maybe? That's another question. We haven't got a checklist that we've included in the ILSA course. Um, we've just got the reading and sort of suggestions of, of questions that a team might want to ask each other or that might sort of naturally come up. And as Daniela, I can see that you've you've added in the chat. Um, yes, yeah. so you do it but, uh, very spontaneously. Um, I think that it can be a, a sort of rather spontaneous process as well, right, Vili? All right. Okay. Uh, yes, and people are just uh, giving positive feedback for the, the, the interlingual subtitling right now. Yes, so Isabel. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. If I may just say, Isabel, um, we have included checklists as part of the um, guidelines that we'll present um, in IO7. So those IO, in IO7, which are the kind of protocols or now called guidelines for um, interlingual re-speaking and intralingual actually on TV educational set settings and live events. We've introduced different types of checklists there and do's and don'ts. So part of that may be included there and we've made a bit of an effort to translate all this into uh, language and the type of documents that could be um, easily transferred to the industry. So hopefully a part of what Daniel is asking may be there and if not we could we can consider adding it. And Gunter was saying yeah kudos to Evan and Dennis uh, for their job which is fantastic and when we talk about working conditions I think we should you know bear this very much in mind because this is a long event and yeah you're doing a great job thank you very much. And as for Portuguese Jacobo Curais, as I said he was testing it. Um, we haven't been able to find anything that works really well so far and I'm guessing that uh, I don't know whether anybody has tested Dragon in Portuguese because I don't think it's currently available unless anybody can maybe correct me if I'm wrong. One thing for nuance to have speech recognition for the phone, for example, um, but quite another is to actually have Dragon, Dragon Professional. So I guess, um, and we have an answer now, which is Dragon does not work with Portuguese, I believe. Exactly. But Nuance does have speech recognition for Portuguese. It's just that they're using it for different applications. So enough pressure. I mean, it's a matter of actually putting pressure on them so that they can see enough of a market for Dragon to be developed using speech recognition in Portuguese that Nuance already has. And that would be a good answer. But I guess I haven't seen the, the need for it yet.